Good morning and welcome to the Killing Co Market Update. The biggest news this week is the suspension of Neil Woodford's equity income fund. So for the time being, the fund cannot be bought, sold or transferred. Now this fund was launched back in 2014 and initially investors who bought into it thought that Woodford would be following the strategy that had been so successful for him for such a long time. And that was investing in large FTSE 100 companies, companies with big dividends. Now initially that is what Woodford did and initially the performance of the fund was actually pretty good and there was a time when there was over £10 billion invested in this fund. However, over the last two years, the performance has been far weaker, as you can see by this performance chart here. So this shows the performance since 2017. Woodford Funds is shown by the orange line. The FTSE All Share Index is shown by the grey line. And these numbers are on a total return basis, so they do account for dividends as well. So you can see that over this time period, the FTSE All Share has gained 10% and Woodford has lost 10%. So that's a performance of gap of 20%, so therefore you've got a very significant underperformance there by Woodford's fund. So what's gone wrong? Well, a number of different factors, but one of them definitely is Brexit. So within the FTSE All Share, you have got a number of companies that have quite an international focus, and you've got some that are much more domestically focused on the UK. Woodford Funds was definitely much more focused on the UK companies, and for that reason, he has been hit by concerns over Brexit. So people have been selling out of UK focused stocks because they are worried about Brexit. That's definitely been negative for Woodford's fund. Another factor is that he has largely moved away from his original strategy of investing in large UK companies and he has invested more in smaller companies and because his fund was so big he ended up owning a very large proportion of some of these individual stocks. So when investors started pulling out of Woodward Woodford's fund because the performance was weak he was forced to sell out of some of these smaller companies and because he was such a large seller that had a very negative impact on the prices of some of these individual shares and that had a knock-on impact on the investors who remained within Woodford's fund. So that's the main reason why he has decided to suspend the fund temporarily. It really is to protect investors who remain within the fund. And he, he believes that by closing the fund, for at least 28 days, that will give him a chance to reposition the fund away from some of these smaller companies. Now, a lot of these companies within the fund are actually private companies, so you would think that it will take at least 28 days, probably more, for him to move away from some of these positions. So actually, we would expect the fund to be closed for longer than this. But in the meantime, Woodford has said that he will be providing daily updates on the prices of this fund. Uh, so we will be watching this very closely. But in the meantime, if you would like to understand more about this, I would recommend watching two further videos. One is the apology video that Woodford uploaded onto his own website. And the other is a video that was published by our head of education, Tim Bennett. And he's produced a video explaining how these types of funds are structured and why they sometimes need to be suspended. So the links to both of those videos can be found within the caption to this video. And also this week, there's been a press conference from Mario Draghi, who's the president of the, of the European Central Bank. And he has said that interest rates in the Eurozone will need to remain at their current record lows for longer than previously expected. So it, previously, he had said that interest rates in the Eurozone would remain low at least until the end of 2019. Yesterday, he extended that, and he's now saying they'll need to remain low at least through the first half of 2020. So the fact that he feels that these rates need to remain remain lower for longer does suggest that the European economy is struggling somewhat and that he believes it needs to have some extra support for a longer period of time. So for us this does highlight that this trade war between the US and China is having a knock-on impact on the rest of the global economy. And finally this week, Ford has, has announced that it will be closing one of its factories in the UK. So sad news, and it will be closing its engine plant in Bridgend, and that will cause a loss of 1,700 jobs. Now, this does highlight a number of key takeaways for us. One is simply that the auto industry has been struggling for quite some time for a number of different reasons. Uh, concerns about emissions on diesel cars, uncertainty around the move to electric cars, the backlog caused by these new emissions tests in the EU. So all of these 
Japanese car manufacturers has been struggling. And you can see here that Ford has been struggling for a couple of years. Here's the chart over the last two years and you can see it as very much a downward trend. So that's one of the takeaways for us. Uh, the other is certainly Brexit causing uncertainty for some of these UK based manufacturers. Ford in the UK just doesn't know what the future tariffs will be on the components that it needs to make its engines and also on the finished product once it's finished producing these cars. So that's perhaps one of the reasons why it has decided to scale down its operations within the UK. And the third takeaway for us is the fourth industrial revolution. So we've been saying that a number of factories on a global basis are moving away from manual labor towards using more artificial intelligence and automation. So perhaps the fact that the Ford plant was quite heavily exposed to people um, was a reason why it had become quite inefficient. And that's perhaps one reason why it has felt the need to close down. But very sad news there indeed, and definitely sad news for the UK economy. Now, taking a look at the week ahead, a fairly quiet one in terms of companies reporting, but we have got results coming out from Tesco and Ferguson. That's it from us. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.